Hello, um, we are going to work out um, frequency con content in a wave train. So what's a wave train? Uh, a wave train is, um, it does not sound, is a wave, um, is a small part of a sinusoidal wave, is a finite uh, harmonic wave. So you can picture it, um, say, um, where the wave originates, you know, usually we have this and we look at this way, right? So this is x axis and this x equal to zero and this is the y coordinate of, of the oscillator. So we usually we look at this picture um, x equal to zero. So this is, um, if I plot this versus time, because x is fixed, so I just can plot versus time. So we're looking at oscillation of the generator. Um, you, uh, you can say, well, I, if I have this, So it's like uh, I went one cycle, two cycle, three cycle, four cycle, five cycles. And I was nothing, I wasn't oscillating. And I oscillated five cycles and then I'm gonna do nothing. So if, if this pattern is, uh, if this pattern is sent uh, in the through this into this string this will as it goes through the string it's gonna excite waves in the string um, and the question is at, at, at some point X when it reaches what it looks like um, in, in, in this window it looks like, of course, uh, if the x is very far away, it's gonna be nothing. And then if x is uh, a sufficient distance, so you have a retarded time to that, then this wave will come and pass through there and then pass through there and so on and so forth. So if, if we have learned that if I give you zero t, something like that, and I want y at x t, what will I get? Well, we learned that if this was a one harmonic wave, if it was just oscillating forever, then we solved that problem and it was um, it, from there to there is you get y in, 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 in the string system uh, you got y zero but t was t retarded which is uh, y for the uh, time in this y that time will be replaced by time now minus x over v so if, if this was a harmonic, harmonic infinite, infinite duration, if that was the case, meaning this thing was going on forever this way and going on forever this way, but that's not a wave train. If that was the case, then the, uh, you'll have some frequency omega and this v is v corresponding to that omega not v times omega v corresponding to that omega because it will go with that phase velocity right now if i have a finite so so if i have infinite 
we have this situation but if i have um, if you have a finite which is the case here 0 t uh, is some function f of t not harmonic which is the case here it's not harmonic because it's not going forever uh, uh, as for example wave train wave train or pulse then what do we have uh, we we don't have this anymore we don't have doesn't mean why xt is y0 t return we won't have that anymore so as a matter of fact uh, if I was able to write this guy in terms of harmonic if I can write this as uh, say y 0 t if I was to write uh, maybe harmonic a sum of harmonics uh, which is called integral a omega so this much of frequency omega cosine omega t d omega and d omega sine omega t d omega and this integrals are 0 to infinity so you can think of I have this much harmonic with cosine and this much harmonic with sine and I'm going to sum over all of these different frequency values right if I have this then each one of them this will go into cosine omega t retard and this will go into sine omega t right time and so y of xt now I can actually write this as a zero infinity a omega cosine omega t minus x over v corresponding to that omega corresponding to that omega uh, and d omega so if this is uh, doesn't depend on omega then of course a non-dispersive wave which is similar to before but uh, if if that was the case I can in general be able to do this uh, and that's the power of Fourier uh, V uh, four omega so V as a function of a particular omega uh, D omega I haven't proved this to you but I'm just going to use this result which means if you give me an arbitrary this guy all I need to figure out is uh, A omega and B omega and then I can actually get uh, how the wave uh, propagates. So this is the vibration to the wave, right? Vibration to two traveling wave. So uh, and all just becomes a simple integral at that point. So that's a that's the power of Fourier, representing representing your your function in t in terms of Fourier. So for a for a wave train, uh, let's uh, let's choose a time in which the wave train is uh, kind of symmetric. Let's see. So I still have the five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, but I want t to be zero here. So t to be zero there, and so this is y zero t. So I take even function. So y zero minus minus t is equal to y zero t. So I've just taken this as a case, a very simple way, uh, just for simplicity. If that's the case. 
then then if I express y uh, 0 t as a omega cosine omega t d omega plus b omega sine omega t d omega then this will be 0 because because of this property you can show that b will be 0 that means I need to only work a omega that's simplification right so that's what that's why I picked this way that I picked this this example to work out because I will have to work out only one of the integrals and then I can look at the integral carefully and see what it says to us physically all right so let's work this out um, and then we, uh, okay so let's see how I'm gonna work it out so a omega is 1 over pi minus infinity to infinity uh, y 0 t this is this is the function f t this is a function f t uh, times cosine omega t dt that was the definition uh, for cosine transform this is cosine transform this coming from definition where is the pi coming from is because I use that particular um, notation for a uh, you know so I've, I, that's a choice I've made and so this this is a choice made in our textbook all right so here what do we have uh, this thing becomes 1 over pi and just goes from minus uh, tau let's call this minus tau over 2 and call this tau over 2 and this frequency uh, or the, this period let's call this t big t maybe t sub 0 let's call this t sub 0 and so tau over 2 and plus tau over 2 and this uh, this will be cosine omega 0 t so um, this this will be just that because I have a finite here uh, let's call this one and this, this is going to be minus one so this this is going to be our y zero t we could have an amplitude a but that will be just constant as we'll pull them out so I don't want to have more constant than necessary cosine omega t um, maybe I will have a constant let's call this displacement is d so I have d and this is minus d so th it's going from plus d to minus d and this just a d not minus this is d okay you can see that um, I have a function this has t and this is t so it's kind of cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 and I could if I multiply by 2 here and multiply by 2 here I could generate this as sum of two cosines so you have a cosine let's see I can keep omega plus omega 0 t plus cosine omega minus omega 0 times t and you can uh, you can notice that this is doable with a d over 2 pi um, and uh, it's going to be this will become sine uh, omega plus omega 0 tau over 2 divided by omega plus omega 0 and there will be two of them um, and then uh, you could say this is this times 2 so you get the same thing with the 2 here right so 
if you want to do that way this two this two here then then we don't have two here we have two here um, and then we have a omega minus omega zero sine omega minus omega zero tau over two I should make sure that this is the whole argument this is the whole argument not just that too many brackets here but I hope you can see it uh, clearly right okay um, you can see that I this argument has only um, symbols here right tau over 2 so if, if I multiply this by tau over 2 and multiply it there by tau over 2 uh, I can get into a cinch so let's multiply both of tau over 2 and times whole thing tau over 2 so the whole thing becomes um, d tau over 2 pi and this is just a sinh function, right? Sinh function no, omega plus omega zero tau over two. That's the argument. And this one is the sinh function of omega minus omega zero tau over two. Okay, so let's look at these guys. Uh, we want to know uh, how this guy varies with omega so th this is this is a function of omega so if I plot this function as an omega uh, actually I go have to go to the negative omega minus omega 0 that's where the peak will be that will be 1 and if I go a omega 0 tau over 2 if I go and not uh, when this whenever this thing is uh, uh, omega plus omega 0 tau over 2 is n pi I'm gonna get 0 so that makes it uh, over here uh, let's call it let's call it Delta here and then another Delta here so these places will be 0 so this is going to be come out like this and and it's going to reduce to one fifth and then like a one seventh and so it's, it's going to be uh, like this I not necessarily goes through zero here right because omega is down here and depends on omega zero and the periods so this delta uh, delta is um, coming from here right so it's going to be um, 2 pi over tau those are the deltas so this much is delta this much another delta this much another delta those places zero and in between is de decreasing so over if this is one this is approximately a minus one fifth and this guy is approximately minus one eight uh, and so it's kind of keeps going down uh, pretty rapidly um, this guy is actually going to be what I'm will be interested in because omega zero is positive so omega zero will be positive over and it'll be exactly like this uh, and so this will be one and where this again delta for this also delta another delta another delta so these will be the zeros and so it's going to come out and the deltas on this side be zero same way so it's going to come out like come out like And it's going to be one fifth again and one eighth over here so this this is going to be one fifth minus one fifth plus one eighth so and it's going to be right side be similarly similarly right 
right side and this has similarly on the left side okay so we have this right and we're looking positive frequency uh, you can see that this term when it gets to omega zero here is uh, is small so th this i can kind of ignore near omega equals to omega zero right so we, uh, it will be very small and we can uh, if the two things are very far away if they're not very close to zero we can ignore the left one so we can say what's going to happen near near omega equals to omega zero so this this is the central frequency frequency at which uh, if you look at omega zero was two pi over t zero so t zero was when this was oscillating you know so th this was t zero but it didn't oscillate forever right so but this is a some frequency of interest this is what uh, original oscillation was like so uh, i look at it this way it just becomes let me pick a different pen uh, so a omega becomes d tau over 2 by something which depends on uh, how long the signal was on uh, what was the amplitude of the signal and 2 pi and you have a sink omega minus omega zero over tau over two and this one looks more uh, this just this guy is what i need right instead of one you will have d tau over two pi if you look at it most of the signal is uh, right between this this main lobe so we call this main lobe and it tells that you know outside of this i can safely ignore it okay so we can call this uh, there's a central frequency which is the frequency at which this is oscillating and then there is a width if you look at the width so cent central frequency omega zero equals to 2 pi over t zero that's the main frequency main or center uh, and then there's a delta omega which you know it's up to us whether we use half there i would just say okay it's a simple to calculate go from where is zero here to where is zero here so delta omega if i do it that way uh, we can say zero to zero okay two zeros around if i use that as delta omega then it is just a uh, two pi over tau and tau is how long this signal has been on this tau i'm using the number of, uh, if you look at tau over t this will give me number of uh, tau over t zero this give me number of uh, cycles that i had it here right so upshot is that I get a I, I don't get just at omega zero omega zero but I also get all this other frequency that of interest two pi over tau delta omega is that so I I get um, in the frequency I normally generate my signal normally has this frequency uh, which you expect because it is oscillating at that frequency so that's the frequency it's oscillating right but it also because it didn't uh, it didn't go on forever it only had this duration uh, it generates uh, my frequency in a in a range so th you can say uh, this is the range i i need to be interested in so that range uh, will get very tiny so if i say tau goes to infinity right so i i do it forever like this i so i, I do it forever 
then that means delta omega will be zero. So you get a very sharp peak just at omega zero, just at omega zero. Now, if, if you had a very uh, few cycles, so if the tau was, uh, tau was maybe close to zero, um, so if I did this in time, well, I'll have very wide, maybe some epsilon is small, okay? So I will have omega, is, if, if I had like this one turn, so I have some time period, okay, that's T0. So I'll, I'll have some kind of T0, omega 0, uh, but the width will be very large. This time width will be large. So you can see that if I have a wave train, if I have a wave train, that depends on how how much time the wave train has been actually oscillating. Uh, in practical applications like say lasers, uh, what would you do? Laser, you will do, here is a laser, and maybe uh, you you have a chopper, beam chopper so if you let laser go it is going to be a num so laser frequency maybe frequency maybe so 10 to the power um, 14 hertz but this time usually will be maybe a um, maybe millisecond say one millisecond so that's just like 10 to the minus 3 second. So tau is 10 to the power minus 3 second. And uh, T0 is 10 to the power minus 14 seconds. So you can see the number of cycles. You know, tau over T0 is number of cycles. 10 to the power 11 cycles. Right? You, you have... Okay, um, so if, if the uh, pulse lasted for this duration and each one of the um, which oscillations was taking this, then uh, you have this many cycles inside one, um, one sample. So this is, this is the pulse that's going and I want to know what's the frequency content. Is it just this? So this, this will just be if I look at uh, frequency, uh, well, if you look at omega zero, so omega zero will be one over uh, two pi over t zero, which is two pi times 10 to the power 14 hertz. Uh, and if you look at um, delta omega, based on how long this pulse has been, that's gonna be two pi over tau and this 2 pi times 10 to the power not hertz this not hertz that's um, you can say per second or radian per second and this is also radian per second you usually don't write the radian you just say per second that's that's the unit so if you want to have hertz i'll have to kill that 2 pi okay so if if i were to plot it if i plot omega so I'm gonna have omega zero, which will look like um, two pi uh, times 10 to the power 14. And width is saying um, this whole thing is, this whole thing is uh, two pi 10 to the power three. So I have uh, so this point will be two, this value, 2 pi times 10 to the power 14 plus uh, 2 pi times 10 to the power 3 over 2. And then this side will be, this point will be 2 pi 
times 10 to the power 14 minus 2 pi times 10 to the power 3 over 2. You can see that this is such a humongous number. These guys will all, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. But if you were to um, look at the correct scale, I mean, this, this to zero is way out there, you know. Uh, if I look at just divide by this everybody so if I divide by this and say omega I'm gonna have a 2 pi times 10 to the power 14 units unit so this is equal to 1 unit then I'll get 1 for the peak and then this guy will be 1 times 1 plus half times 10 to the power minus 11. Think about it, how small it's going to be. And this other guy will be, on the left side, I'm going to be 1 minus half times 10 to the power minus 11, which means, uh, you know, the, I know this is going to look like this if I expand it, but in all reality, these guys will be so close to each other that this peak will not be looking like that. It's going to be more like, whoops, in a in a regular, you know, scale. If this is one, and this is two, and this is zero, it's just going to be invisible. This this part will be not visible. So even the laser, uh, you know, in a laser when we chop things by a chopper, the pulse strain that we generate is to a very large approximation. You can just say, I have just a single frequency, although there are multiple frequency here, but you can, for all practical purposes, you can treat as a single frequency. So there are applications like this of, uh, uh, in our uh, real uh, physical settings. Um, so what's coming up next uh, after this? Um, well, we we can do one more example uh, called so-called Gaussian pulse. Uh, we uh, yeah, I'll let you dis uh, study a study on yourself, okay? A, a study yourself. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to move on to the other topics. Uh, I'm going to next do waves in three dimensions waves in three dimensions in waves in three dimensions uh, some more interesting things come up well, well for instance we have things like polarization of the waves we're going to discuss um, you might have uh, heard or read or studied before uh, say what is a polarized light Uh, so something like that we're going to study. Uh, th this will also take us into other topics that are coming up, which I would definitely like to uh, include, is interference of waves. So those are the things that are coming up. I'm going to stop here. And this has been a good enough for us. Uh, let's... Uh,